Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on a glorious journey. A journey from 3,000 MMR all the way up to 3,900. And I'm stupidly... Well, it's 3,900 plus. It's like 3,968 or something. I'm really close to getting Grandmaster. And I've done this in two days. And I've done this in solo queue. And I'm going to tell you how the hell I've done this. Because it's not hard. It is absolutely not hard. Alright, so the first thing we're going to talk about is what you should select when you get into the game. Select your strongest hero. Now, this might be stupid advice, right? Why select strongest hero? Well, that's the hero you're going to play the best with. Ignore the meta. Don't think, oh, I'm pretty good with Genji. So, uh, I know he's not in the meta. Uh, 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 Alright, I'm going to play Soldier. You don't play Soldier. You play Genji. You lock in as Genji. Now, something might happen here. And it probably will happen. It depends what level you're playing at, or at least I thought it did, because actually it absolutely doesn't. This happens at every single level in the game. Somebody on your team might say to you, don't play Genji. If they do say that to you, what you've got to do is go, oh no, it's cool, I'm really good with Genji. Don't ignore them or go, why? Why should I? What, what are you talking about? Because when you start getting defensive, they get defensive straight away. And as soon as something happens in the game and it goes wrong, they will blame you 100%. So what I've been doing is I'll go into a game, I'll pick Soldier 76. Because believe it or not, I am actually pretty good with Soldier 76. And I know that I can have a, a pretty high impact on the team. So I want to play Soldier. I lock in as Soldier. Nobody's going to say to me, come off Soldier at the start, because, yeah, he's in meta, okay, and all of that stuff. But they might say to the Genji guy who's locked in as well, Genji, can you change? We need a triple tank build. If they say that, what I say is, no, it's okay. Genji will be fine, guys. It's cool. I back up the Genji player. Now, note, this is in the hero selection screen. This is not during the match. It's when we're picking our heroes to begin with. This is when the games are honestly won or lost, because if the team leave the spawn with the kind of the idea that they're going to lose, so they've already lost in the head, they're too negative because they don't like Genji, because they don't like some pick or whatever, then you've lost. So it's your job, your absolute job to defend people if they're being attacked. Like, oh, we don't need a Torbjorn on this point. Just say, no, nah, it might be all right, guys. The Torb might be okay. I played with a Torbjorn guy who had 40 hours of Torb. That's all he played in Season 3. And we won quite easily on Hanamura on attack and defense. Now, okay, Torbjorn on attack, not the greatest probably. There probably are better picks. The thing is, right, that's if somebody is good with every single hero. Well, this guy clearly could only play Torbjorn. So why would you want him to play somebody else that he's never played before? This is the crazy thing to me, and it makes no sense. So the first thing I honestly recommend you do, select your strongest hero, but also defend other people selecting off-meta heroes, especially at the start of the game. Now, if things are going wrong, so if you've got a Farrah on your team, and she's not doing anything, and she's getting killed by the Widow over and over again, then maybe you can suggest Farrah, do you think you can change? And they might say, um... I, I, okay, I can only play Soldier. Now, if you're playing Soldier, you have to give them Soldier then, right? Because then you need to play something else. But we'll get onto that in a second. Can I take Soldier 76? Now, what this means is, if I've locked in as Soldier, or if I've locked in as Genji, or whatever hero you guys play, and somebody on your team asks you for that hero, give it to them. Don't even ask them any questions. Just go, okay, give it to them. Because what they're saying is, right, and people don't want to admit this, they're not going to say... Um, I'm crap with every other hero, but I'm okay with the hero you've selected. That's basically what they're saying. So if somebody says that to me, I'm like, cool, you take Soldier, and I'll give them Soldier. Then I'll play something else, right? I'm okay with other heroes, and I can kind of fall back onto a Zarya, obviously a Reinhardt, or something like that, or even a Lucio if, it, if needs be, right? That's cool, because what we've done there is we have just given the team a better chance of winning. You may well be a better Soldier than that guy, right? Or a better Genji. But if he just plays a hero he has never played before versus you playing a hero that you've got some experience with. Always give them your hero if they ask for it. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, right? When I say play your best hero, then if somebody says, hey, can I take the soldier, then you give it to them. Why would you do that? Well, you're making them better. You've got to look at Overwatch as a team, right? Because that's what it is. It's not a solo player game. Yeah, sure, play your strongest hero, but that kind of gets overruled by making the team stronger. And if that means giving your hero away, then do it. The fact is, if you're stupidly stubborn and won't swap off your hero regardless of anything, it will start tilting. The, well, I say it will. The team will start to tilt. And they'll tilt quite severely because what will happen is they'll blame you for every single issue. If you're playing Widowmaker on attack or defense, wherever the hell you're playing Widow, and things are not going well, maybe you're not landing shots, maybe you're getting killed a lot, things are not working out, you've got to step up and think, all right, I've got to change. Because if you don't, the team will quickly latch onto you and go, can, can we change the Widow? Widow's useless. Oh my God, Widow's useless. Now, if somebody is telling you you are bad 
especially over the internet, with anonymity, right? So you don't know who they are, they don't know who you are, and somebody suddenly is going, oh, Widow, you are so bad. Sty, get off Widow, you're so bad, mate. You're the worst Widow I've ever seen. Are you just going to sit there and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll listen to this nice person? Of course not. You're going to go, kiss my ass, mate. And then you start getting aggressive back to the guy, and then the game has been thrown. So sometimes you've got to make sure that you know when to swap, right? So it's all right staying on a hero, but you have to swap if it's not working. You've got to be very, very super chill. Right? If you get rolled on the first point, and you know what? Things will go wrong. This is Overwatch. You will always get smashed at some sort of point. They'll maybe come in, they'll get like, I don't know, somebody plays out of their skin, they wipe you out, you get absolutely wrecked. It's cool. What tends to happen is, though, the team will get very negative. It'll be like, oh my god, what were you doing, Ryan? Why did you charge in? And they start blaming each other, and this happens every single game, like when you get rolled. What you've got to do, and it's your job in this position, is just go, I oh, know, guys, it's cool, it's okay, we got this. Even if you're typing into the text, you've probably seen some of the footage in the background if I've used that in this video, where I'll be like, guys, it's alright, we got this, you know, because what I'm trying to do is I'm typing to them because I don't want to use my voice because it might be a little bit like, um, come on guys, we got this, don't worry about it, and then sort of be like, nah, we ain't got it, what are you talking about? Kind of sometimes using text can be a little bit more... Um, people kind of read into it a little bit more, I think, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe we can get this. But staying positive is absolutely critical. And like I said, remember, this is Overwatch. Fuck-ups will happen, and they happen all of the time. Do not be the guy who calls people out for their bad moves. Maybe Zarya fired her ultimate off five or six fights ago, and it was bad. She fired it straight into D.Va, or she just totally missed, or something ridiculous. Don't bring this up again. You all make mistakes. It is totally fine. I guarantee, if you watch your own footage back, you will see loads of mistakes at whatever level you're playing at. Because a lot of people know how to play this game, but putting it into practice is a completely different thing. So please be chill. You've got to be absolutely chill in this game. If you're not, people are going to start tilting. And you've got to go against that. You've got to be aware of when people are starting to tilt and then calm them down. You know, whether that's swapping off a hero, whether that's giving them a hero they like, or whether that's just telling them to calm down or going, it'll be all right, guys, we got this. Don't worry about it, we got this. People will believe. I mean, I won a 5v6 game on Bolskaya, and I'm sure it was on Bolskaya. It was 5v6. At the end of that game, I had 67% accuracy on Soldier 76. That is insane. That is insane. It's because I knew I'm going to have to pull this together, and we were being very positive as a team, and we won. We absolutely won, and we only won that because we believed. Don't force people to swap. What this means is, when you're in hero selection and you see the team get built, and this is kind of goes back to like my original point where I was saying, look, don't worry about the meta. If somebody picks Genji and Genji's not in the meta right now, it's cool, right? Genji can still have an impact. If that guy's got 100 hours on Genji, believe you me, you want him on Genji. You don't want him on Soldier, right? You just want that straight up. So what you don't want to do during Hero Select is go, guys, we need two more tanks. Guys, we need uh, this. Guys, we need that. Guys, get rid of the Symmetra. She's no good. Guys, get rid of it. Because that might be what that person plays. And you know what? They can absolutely work. It just can in any level range on the ladder it can absolutely work these are not pro level games and people get caught up in this way too much with overwatch they'll watch the pro scene they'll watch videos describing what the meta is they'll go to various websites and they'll check out what what's the most used pro team build what should we be doing all right we should just be doing triple tank with anna and lucio and then soldier or whatever that's cool if you've got people that can play those classes or those heroes if you don't then you don't want to force it you've got to work with whatever your team is and remember this as well if your team goes off meta it might catch the enemy team off guard they might not have something to deal with it and you know that's great right yeah that is absolutely great it is a positive so do not ever force people to swap. Don't bully people into changing because people go in and generally pick the heroes they want to play. I think what I'm trying to get at is it's just all in the mind this is. I've gone from 3k to 3,900 plus in two games with over a 60% win rate. That is extremely high and it's not luck. It is not luck. It's me playing soldier and playing him well. I know how to play soldier. I know the positions I should be in. I know when I should be using my ultimate. I know everything I need to be doing. I do my job and I make sure I do it well. But beyond that, I make sure the team is together. I make sure the team work as a unit. I don't go in and just abuse somebody. I don't slate people. I don't say that's such a terrible pick. I want a game with a Widow and a Torbjorn on my team on attack. How is that possible, you're probably thinking. Well, it's possible because Widow gets picks and Torbjorn's giving you armor packs. So you last long when you do more damage and Torb's not that bad, actually. So you know what I'm saying? You've just got to work with it, guys. Guys, 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 guys. It is crazy, right? I honestly expected that within this... Um, I didn't think I'd do it as fast as I did, right? So within two days, it was pretty quick. I thought I was. it was going to be a case of 
it's going to be up and down. It's going to be. I'm going to be stuck at like 3k. I'm going to get teams that are terrible. But teams are not terrible. Teams, people play. It's not so much about the team at that level. It's about people. People play the heroes they want to play. It is up to you to play in a team. You cannot go around on your own. Don't just tilt if you see the stupidest thing happen and be like, oh, whatever. This guy's playing Genji. Screw this guy. Or he's playing Torbjorn. So I'm just going to play Roadhog. I've never played him before. Pff, let's do it. Because you, you have caused that loss there. And it is crazy to me the amount of games people throw away doing this. But the fact is, in two days, I've gone from 3K to 3.9K in solo queue by doing what I've just told you in this video, which is not rocket science. I've just been a nice person. I've played the heroes I'm good with. If anybody asks me for the hero I'm playing, I give it to them and play somebody else. If we need a, like a healer or maybe we need a Reinhardt, I'll fill the role. It's cool, whatever, I'll do it because I know we need to do that to win the game. And that is all that matters when you're playing competitive. Be nice to your fellow players and you will win more bloody games. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Salosa and this is Unit Lost. If you enjoyed the video, then like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment below with your own tips. But I've got to be honest, this rise of 900 points in two days is rapid. And I and obviously I was on win streaks because I just kept winning and winning and winning. And I did lose some games, okay, um, when I had just straight up trolls on my team. Like people, there was one guy playing Farah, and he just came into the voice comms and said, Hi, I'm going to lose. Ha <laughs> ha. And it was like, right, <laughs> why? And we just thought he was joking, but he wasn't. He was just he just did nothing all game. So it was a 5v6 and we lost. And it was like, okay, that was strange. I don't know why somebody would do that, but you will get that. When you get that, just go into the next game. It's cool. And I'll tell you something as well. Listen to music while you're playing the game. That will chill you out as well. All right, guys. I'm Salo said this is Unit Lost. That's why you can't hear any of the uh, gameplay footage in the, or any of the music in the gameplay footage in the background because, well, I was listening to like 80s dance music. Yeah. I'm gone, ladies and gentlemen. I'll catch you on the next one. Doodaloo.